Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in my training retrospective video on Ironman Karma. We've got a lot to talk about so let's dive straight into it, shall we? I find it very important to understand every athlete's background when it comes to analyzing training. So a little bit about myself, I entered uh, my third triathlon season in 2018 and I had done one full distance Ironman in Hamburg the year before and three half distances. There is a separate dedicated video that you can find in the description below that shows you all the stuff that I had done before I became a triathlete. My season plan looked as follows. My structure training started at March the 12th. Doesn't mean I didn't do anything beforehand, like I focused a lot on my swim and run pace and I wanted to make sure before I am in Karma that I as training benchmarks did two half distance uh, triathlons, one being Staffordshire, the other Hever Castle Triathlon, both in the UK. And the other event that I squeezed in was Vettenrundan, which is a 300 kilometers, 180 mile bike ride around Sweden's second, second biggest lake. I picked the 80-20 triathlon training plan by Matt Fitzgerald and David Warden. I did a similar one last year, but with less focus on the 80-20 rule. We're going to talk about that in a minute when it comes to intensity. The goals that I set myself were I wanted to improve on all three disciplines, even though you've got to be careful comparing races. I am aware of that. But most of all for me, it was important to experience the difference between my first Ironman and the second Ironman. The key principles behind the 80-20 triathlon training plan is that you spend 80% training at low intensity and 20% at high intensity. You can read all about the benefits in the book by Matt and David that I'm going to link below. But if you want to figure out your own zones, and I've got an example over here for my run pace, go and check out that pace calculator online where you type in like your run, swim and bike paces and performances and then you get the zones spit out. Um, you see over here there's like an X and a Y zone. Um, those are the zones that you should avoid because you're not getting enough value out of it. Zone 1 and 2 is low intensity and the other ones are medium to high intensity. Having a look at the first numbers, I did finish Kalma in 1011 and I also put like the numbers from Ironman Hamburg the previous year even though I want to say be cautious comparing races, even the same race Ironman Kalma 2018 and 2017 um, are different because of different temperatures, uh, different race conditions. Anyway, um, looking at the average training time, I've um, done 11.24, so that is an increase uh, compared to the training of last year. Longest week, I mean, you can read it over here, uh, six, longest week was 16 hours, um, swim, bike and run um, times over here. So roughly the same, biggest difference is my longest bike, that was because I did the 300 kilometer bike ride and yeah, on the run, a little bit less, but we're going to look into the details for each discipline in a minute. Talking about uh, the first numbers in distance, um, you see my longest bike ride was the um, Vettenrundan in Sweden, the 300 kilometer bike ride. Um, the longest run, just 15.5 miles um, and the longest swim, 3,400. What I want to show here is, yeah, you don't necessarily have to run a, a marathon in your training, but again, this depends on your training background. And I felt more confident because of the experience from last year that I, that I knew I, I don't have to do the super, super long runs. Next, I put together the total distances and I'm comparing like uh, last year to this year, but be careful, the numbers that I've pulled for Ironman Kalmar were 23 weeks of structure training, whereas Hamburg 24, but you can still see like a weekly average comparison over here. We see like for the swim, slightly less than last year, um, the bike a little bit more, but again, bike distance. Um, I did a lot of indoor training. If you ride hilly rides, you get less miles, so be careful with that. Uh, run, I upped it by just one mile, so almost the same. Next, we've got the time spent ratio amongst the three disciplines um, between this year and last year. And if you ask yourself, why is there only swim, bike and run? Did you not do any other type of exercise? No, I didn't. There's very likely <laughs> room for improvement here. But yeah, you can see the biggest chunk is uh, spent on the bike. If you just look at time, uh, then we've got the run 74 hours and 34 hours in total um, on the swim. If you put everything together and if I trained for 10 days straight and I had completed like all my structure training for Ironman Karma, just a fun fact here. Well, let's have a look at the training intensity numbers. One of the key things that the training plan is all about, the AT21. For those of you that are not familiar like with the numbers, you get 100 TSS, a training stress score, for a one hour workout that you do at your threshold pace. If you want to know how to 
determine your threshold pace. It's all listed in this book or go to this pace calculator link that I share below where there's different tests, FTP tests, CSS tests for the swim and, and run pace tests to determine. I'm listing my threshold paces over here and it's very important to, to say that TSS is relative to each person. So both of us can have the same TSS numbers but our thresholds are different which will very likely end in different race results. So just keep that in mind. Um, my weekly average um, has increased from last year from 700 roughly to 784 with my hardest week in week 22 this year. Um, a bit more than 1030 TSS. And I also sharing like my last year's threshold paces. Bike stayed the same. Um, run I did improve because I was working in the off season on my run um, and swim pace. So those were slightly different. So I knew I was at a better threshold this year than, than last year. And now the big question revealed. Did I achieve the 80-20 ratio of intensity? No, I didn't. But I was close. 70 to 30 is the ratio and I'm listing the zones here as well so you can have a look. And again, the zones X and Y are the zones that you should avoid um, and you can see the biggest issue over here is that I spend a bit too much time like in zone X. That's the zone that is not easy enough to be low intensity and not hard enough to give you any performance increases. So um, whereas like the other zones you can, you can see it over here and we're gonna do a deep dive for each sport so you're gonna find out what contributed more like to the underachievement like of the 80 or 20 uh, rule. But still 70-30, quite pleased to be completely honest. Early on we had a look at the Kalmar time distribution and what I want to share over here like in, in this chart is putting next to it like the intensity distribution. And this is a nice example where you see the difference between training by intensity versus, uh, versus time spent. So you see that the ratio changes like if you look at intensity. This is where the bike um, gets cut like a huge chunk and uh, the run gets a much, much bigger chunk and, and also the swim. So this is, you can see the distribution of intensity across the three disciplines over here. Here you can see my annual training plan from training peaks and you can see nicely how I followed like the periodization model with the base blocks, build blocks and race preparations, each block consisting of four weeks with three weeks increased intensity. The last week uh, is recovery. But what's also important is the period leading up to my structured training, the gray block where I focus a lot on the swim and my run pace. All in all, I'm very happy like with how things went here. No uh, big illness that set me back. So I'm very pleased with our 2018 training structure. Next, we'll have a look at my starting CTL value for the structured training plan. So I started at 86 compared to 74 from last year. So I was in a better shape entering uh, the structured training plan, which is also related to the gray block that you saw beforehand. So I entered with a strong foundation. And for those of you that don't know what CTL is, that's the similar to the TSS, but it's a weighted TSS for the last 40 days with a heavier weighting towards the last few weeks. So um, 86 as a starting point, and we're gonna find out now where I finished. And tada, my race day CTL ended up being 107, three CTL less than last year. To be completely honest, I wanted to be at 130, but I, mean, I got a full-time job. I'm an age group athlete, um, a lot of excuses. But no, I mean, the training plan did foresee the level three one to do one hour of weekly training average more, but that's all I could give, to be honest. And, you know, sometimes, you know, life gets in the way. You could say a lot of excuses, but you also got to, be happy like with what you can pull and that's also probably one of the downsides of having a generic training plan that is not catered to exactly like what you can do but anyway i was happy you know i had good benchmarks from the half ironman distance races so being on race with 107 or whatsoever this slide was an interesting one especially last year when i looked at chip time versus CTL from that chart that I pulled from a presentation and it matched perfectly last year. But again, this year, look, I've done a lower CTL value um, and my uh, finish time was better. I mean, again, two different races, Hamburg harder than Ironman Kalmar. 
yes and no. I don't want to do a race comparison like in this video because we'll be focusing on training. But again, gotta take this chart like with a pinch of salt because if you don't have a comparison or the baselines for your threshold paces, I, I don't think like this chart um, will work. Looking at the duration per week over the 23 weeks of training, you do see like the blue and the gray bits. It's across all three disciplines. You see that I averaged 11 and a half hours of weekly training average. The schedule and you see the gray bits are the underachievements uh, that I had because it was scheduled to do 12 and a half hours. But all in all, you can also nicely see the three and one weeks. Um, very pleased um, towards the end again where I should have done more longer rides. So we're going to get to that in a minute. That's where I guess I, I underachieved a little bit in the uh, build blocks, but still very happy with like the 11 and a half hours that I could pull like through those 23 weeks of training with uh, a full time job. Next, you see the same slide, but with intensity and you can see my weekly average over here on the TSS, which you saw before of 784, but you can also see the intensity factor. So how intense is each workout? One, it would be like the threshold intensity. So on average, I had like a 0.75 for each workout on the intensity factor side of things. Okay, let's dive into the swimming stats. Um, by the way, I finished Ironman Kalma in one hours and 12 minutes. The average time per week, you saw that before, was like one hour and 30 minutes, um, 10 minutes less average training than last year. Um, also reduced average distance per week, it's around uh, from five kilometers to 4.7. Longer swim, a little bit longer indoor-outdoor ratio. And you can see over here, like on the chart, a lot of underachievement, a lot of gray bits, and not a lot of structure actually visible. But yeah, that's just the, duration stats, how does intensity look like? Boom, 29 to 71 ratio, 80 20 was the target. Oh, you can see um, a lot's gone, gone wrong here. Um, zone X 24%, like the zone that you should avoid, 18% in the highest intensity zone, five eyes. Let me know how you manage to swim in intensity zones. <laughs> Um, I find the zones are very tight together. I, I struggle maybe because I don't swim enough. I don't know. Being in touch with David, the author, I'm super keen like to hear your thoughts. You can see like in this intensity chart, like the dark blue ones are the high intensities towards the end of the plan. I even up the intensity. Was that good? Was that bad? I don't really know. Super keen like to hear your thoughts. It's definitely been super interesting like for me to, to have these numbers transparent. So I finished Ironman Kalma bike split in five hours and eight minutes um, with an average training time of 6.19. So I upped my weekly training time. Uh, distance, take it with a pinch of salt because are you riding hills, flats, um, indoor, outdoor, 109 miles. My longest one again, veteran run down the uh, ride and the ratio indoor, outdoor, 70, 30, similar to last year. I love indoor cycling. So spend a huge chunk indoor. And yeah, over here you can see towards the end, um, at least in terms of uh, achieving the targets, the great bits are the underachievements. So I should have done more longer rides like in uh, the build blocks, which I didn't do. But all in all, I'm still, still very happy on um, the distance numbers that I should have achieved and that I did achieve. But let's look at the intensity. Boom, 79 to 21, almost exactly 80, 20. Huge credits to the Wahoo kicker in Eric mode and Swift and the training plan from Training Peaks from Matt because you get the workouts from the training plan with the power zone. So if you do Eric mode on your power trainer, you can only ride like in these zones. So that most definitely helped. Here's like all the zones that I've did for transparency. Um, super pleased with it. Last but not least, let's talk about the run. I finished the marathon in three hours and 44. Average training time, I upped it slightly, just by four minutes, yeah. Um, distance per week, um, one mile more. Uh, every mile counts, every mile counts. Longest um, run, shorter, I mentioned that early on because I had the confidence from the previous race, I knew I didn't have to do the longer one and the ratio yeah, I spent most of the time running outdoors. You see the chart. I was very happy like with my running to be completely honest. You see um, not a lot of underachievement, mostly towards the end a little bit. That's when it gets really, really hard. I found, I mean, the second of the build blocks are, are really the hard ones if you <laughs> work and train. 
Anyway, that's my running stats. Let's look at the running intensity. 76 to 24, not too shabby. Listing all the zones over here, um, you can have a look at yourself. Um, please, um, lesson learned from this training plan. I do remember there were brick workouts and I hadn't done this before where I had to do intervals of the bike uh, at high intensity, um, you know, like at the zone fours um, and zone three. They did hurt, but I, I feel they added value. So all in all, I'm, I'm happy like with my run performance, even though if I just compare the marathon times, I was just, I think like 30 seconds slower this year. But again, comparing to different races, um, how do you enter? How do you get off the bike? You know, I had a stronger bike and then the temperatures plays, plays a huge role. I'm super proud like with my, with my run. All right, let's wrap things up in a similar way than last year. Final thoughts, looking back at the structured training plan, all in all, I'm very happy. Key takeaway like for me again is um, structured versus unstructured. I said this in the last video before. The first, the red bit is like the unstructured training. If you do structured like with the periodization, the base and the build blocks, the three and four weeks, you get like these nice hill shape um, CTL um, charts and you can almost see an identical CTL chart this year to last year so consistency really pays off and what's also a lesson learned is that even though I'm sharing a lot of numbers from these 23 weeks of structured training I feel it's also super important how your off-season is structured the period like in the winter leading up to the 23 weeks of training and I'm very happy I spent time with uh, a swim coach Julian Nagy and analyzing my, 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 my swim which paid off if you haven't seen that video I'm gonna link it below so working on these areas um, definitely helped you can see I swam less throughout the structured training but I think I took five minutes off uh, the swim in Kalmar and comparing swims between two races even though they're different I am convinced to say that the Hamburg swim was not open water, um, was like in this artificial lake in the heart of the city, was easier than the Kalmar swim, um, which was like in the Baltic Sea. And yeah, anyway, uh, it paid off. That's the message that I wanna say, working on technique, being smart, um, improving technique, especially like on the, on the swimming. I did find the training plan more intense than the one that I did last year, which was a generic, not 80-20 training plan by Matt and David. Mainly because, yeah, I do still, if I've got one thing in my head, it's like these nasty brick workouts with um, uh, intervals on the run. Anyway, um, it was quite versatile, like that training plan, and it was fun, hard, but fun. But that's what I remember. And another advice or final thought is that, yeah, being an age grouper, working full time, I trained probably 95% of the training by myself and I just valued every workout that I could do like with the team or with uh, someone else and my, my friends. So open water, Shepparton, uh, people know who I'm talking about. Ah, uh, highlight of my triathlon training to be completely honest. I love the open water swims. Oh. Mm -hmm. Anyway, next one. There is a trade-off picking a generic training plan. Um, I picked the level three. There's only three levels um, on the 80-20 training plan, a one, two, and three. It's just not catered to yourself. Um, and hence, you know, like the 12 and a half hours of training. I couldn't fit around my schedule. Um, but then it just felt most of the time, even though looking at the numbers right now, I, I'm feeling quite proud about it. It still felt like I underachieved most of the times. So for those of you that like to see um, everything being green and completed every workout, um, yeah, either you can do it. Like I mean, it just didn't work for me. That's the that's the message. But I was less stressed than last year because I had the confidence that I can finish a full distance Ironman, and that made the entire training, structured training, or the entire training easier. Like for me mentally, to be completely honest, and not as much uh, pressure and. Yeah, I'm just super proud that I added another Ironman finish moment to my memories that no one, no one, no one can take away. With that being said, 
Thank you everyone for watching. I hope this video did add value to yourself. If it did, just give it a like. Um, I'm super keen to hear your thoughts, your feedback. I also want to share, be a little bit careful comparing my numbers to yours. Um, we've all got different backgrounds and yeah. That's all I want to say. Um, what's next? Um, subscribe and then you're going to find out what I'm going to do like in 2019. I still got a lot of videos to edit footage post Iron Man um, that I'm excited to do. And then, yeah, I'll keep you posted. With that being said, I hope I see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.